Good friggin' morning from New England, folks, and welcome back to episode 15 of the So New England podcast. I am your host, Ian Brownhill, joined by my co-host, counterpart, RJ Travisano, and behind, on the production side of things, all things life's better in New England, Vincent Granary. (laughs) There it is. We have a very fun, exciting guest. Again, I'm trying to be versatile here, guys, so I've got another completely different than my type of content creator here. But without further ado, RJ, why don't you give us one of your awesome introductions for today's guest? Let's get after it. This is episode 15, and we're going to have some serious fun today. I've been following this guest for some time now, and when I when Ian said he was coming on the pod, I smiled as big as I do when I walk up to the buffet line. <laughs> Our guest hails from the great brother state of Mass, but today may be the day Ian meets his maker because we got some CT roots on the pod. Wow. With 750,000 followers between TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube, you may have seen his skits when it comes to absolutely everything when it comes to the outdoors. And yes, I mean everything. Our guest today is unmatched in character development, and if you don't believe me, just go check out his page. From the typical person whose whole life is their hobby, or somebody who just takes alternative sports like pickleball and badminton way too seriously. (laughs) But don't let those skits fool you. Our guest today is also an avid hiker, and I'm sure he can handle his own in many things he makes funny. He has conquered the Appalachian Trail and the PCT, and for all you non-hikers out there, that's the Pacific Crest Trail. Google that bad, Larry. <laughs> With articles in Outside Magazine, a truly, truly hilarious comedian and producer, it's my pleasure to welcome episode 15 of the So New England Pod, Schmutz, a.k.a. Matt Lyons. <laughs> Yes, sir. What a great introduction. Oh, Sometimes yeah. I feel like you give so much like in-depth details. Like you don't even need to be here anymore. We've got yeah. it covered. Yeah. Thank yeah. you for let coming. Me, let me catch the next train out yeah. here. That's perfect. <laughs> I think you're the first person to take the train in. <laughs> really? Yeah. Nice. Was, so Kev Kev Cooney was on. He took a helicopter in, and everyone else just gets stuck in traffic. I saw that. I was gonna say when you said six o'clock, I'm like, this is gonna take me three hours to get down here. <laughs> Literally, so I'm just gonna hop on the train, <laughs> disassociate <laughs> for a minute or two. And so you're up in Boston now, right? Uh, Somerville. 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 I oh, got to be nice. real careful around you, yeah. New England folks. Yes, to, uh, exactly. Yeah. Somerville. It's Actually, that's smart. my. It's very smart. My sister-in-law lives in Somerville, so I know that that's kind of where it's a little bit more laid back. A couple more, more coffee shops. People are a little bit happier. A little less that Boston attitude going on, hanging oh, around. A lot of bikes. Yeah, a lot, a lot of bikes. <laughs> it's crazy. I ride a bike myself, and I'm like, I nearly get hit by them every day. It's insane. <laughs> Literally, honestly, anytime I go to Boston, that's like. The bike lane is like the one thing I'm, I've yet to totally understand. I'm like, am I in the bike lane? Should I be honking know. at this guy? Is it like <laughs> one of those guys who owns the road on the bike or am I? Yeah. I don't know. I can never really tell. So, all right. Well, you're our first Connecticut guest. Really? I believe so. Yes. Yeah. Correct. Right. Wow. So we've had people have lived there before, but you're yep. the first Connecticut born raised. Yes. And, I can and you know verify, how we feel about this. I can verify because of the phone number that I got. 860? From him was an 860. Wow. Yeah, so I will say, uh, not born. Not born. Okay, okay. so yeah. where were you born? Born in Philly. Philly, oh. wow. I um, I lived in Connecticut since I was three. Okay. Um, until uh, after college. So I grew up oh, there. Yeah. But okay. um, born in Philly. And, wow, uh, yeah. Are you a Philly sports fan, though? No. Oh, okay, no, thank no, God. No. Um, sports, I feel episode. like... The whole sports <laughs> fandom in my family is sort of messed up. Uh, my older brother and I were Yankees fans, actually. Wow. So okay. Is, um, well, that's actually typical of a Connecticut person. Yeah, we're right on the cusp. So our, our hometown, I think we mapped it one time. It's like two hours to New York City, two hours to Boston. Right. Now. And uh, my mom and my younger brother are Red Sox fans. My dad's a Mets fan. So it's kind of like all across the board. (laughs) Um, Everything other than baseball, though, I'd say I'm pretty New England heavy. Okay, cool. Um, Celtics, Bruins, uh, Patriots. Nice. So, yeah. And that's, that's so right. we actually met, what was it? The Revs game we met at, right? Yeah. It First was, time, it was. which was crazy. So I was talking about prior to this, and I had always seen his content, and I was saying that he reminds me of my younger uh, middle brother. Excuse Sullivan. me, I'm the youngest of three. My middle brother, Sullivan, because he's a bit more outdoorsy. <laughs> yep. So anytime you said something, like, <laughs> I would like send it to my brother. I'm like, dude, this is so you, you fucking loser. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, this is you. You talk like this. Um, but it was great. And then I like, you know, we bumped into you at the Revs game. And I was like, oh, dude, holy shit. I had no idea that you were a New Englander. Now, yeah. that's probably my own fault because, you know, I'm an avid consumer. So, you know, sure. doom scrolling, sometimes you don't pay attention to all the details like I should have. So 
Yeah, My no apologies worries. in that sense. Hey, but no worries. Yeah. Cool. So born in Philly, raised in Connecticut. What part of Connecticut? Uh, Southern Central, like Old Saybrook, the town of Old Okay, Saybrook. we know. Like oh, yeah. Right along 95. Close-ish to me. Yeah. yeah. He's down in New London, Connecticut. Oh, yeah. yeah. New London, Waterford. I got family in New London. I try and say Mystic to be safe. So. <laughs> <laughs> Near that he lives in the aquarium. Brighton. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so what? So then what's your take? We've never had anyone give us a take on Connecticut. So give us your take. What is it like? Is it like, I happen to... I happen to like Connecticut. I actually think it is a beautiful you state. You need to finish that. It does, if you have it. but you're I, not pandering. But I just no, no. I swear. Right. So because where we grew up, I grew up in Eastern Connecticut, New London, Mystic. So that area, Stonington, it's it is very beautiful. But it's yeah. not well, not Stonington, and, but yeah. Well, if you go to like it's the an, borough, it's a and rival you go over, thing. It's very nice, but it's a rival thing. Yeah, I, I mean, it's yeah. not it's not Valid. much different. Eastern Connecticut's not much different than Rhode Island. It kind of is no. built and Extension. looks and, and yeah, it looks the same as everything here in Rhode Island. So. I like it, but I'd like to get like a Connecticut residence. Takes. What was it like growing up there? Schooling, when you went to high school, sports, what was the vibe? Yeah, so you were saying before the show you went to like a private. Was yeah, like yeah, I went to a private high school? Catholic high school. Yep. Same. All boys. Same. So okay. I went um, all guys in Middletown. Do you yeah. know Middletown? I do. Yeah. Yep. So I went up there. It was like a half hour from Old Saybrook. I would drive every day when I got my license. And, uh, I used to be on the swim team there in, okay. in high school. It's kind of getting ahead. But um, the half-hour drive, I didn't want to drive back after school and then come back up for practice. Our practices were 7 to 9 p.m. at Wesleyan. Jeez. Oof. In their pool. A beautiful pool, by the way. Yeah. Awesome pool. <laughs> Shout out we love a good pool. pool. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so what we would do is the team and I, we would just stay after school. I was up in Middletown for like, 12 hours a day yeah seriously without going home and i would uh so i'd get to school pretty early we'd just hang out for like four hours just doing god knows what after just like messing around and definitely got up to no good and then we would go to <laughs> practice i think one day we had like taco bell we went to taco bell between school and practice i showed up with like a baja blast cup like xl <laughs> and that was my water bottle at practice i think my coach kind of got pissed about that <laughs> um so yeah catholic high school Went to public school down in my hometown. Um, got a bunch of buddies there. And it was, I really didn't explore Connecticut that much. I'd say I would either go east or west gotcha. rather than like north. Right. Um, until I got a little bit older. And then I, I had some friends that were a little spaced out in high school because they were coming from all over. And then I did a little bit of hiking in like northwest corner of Connecticut. Gorgeous. We right. got some like great mountains up there, hills, whatever you want to call them. <laughs> yeah, kind of hills. <laughs> yeah, and so I would I would get up there every once in a while, do some hikes on the AT on that little stretch that goes through Connecticut. Do a little skiing on the um, like six hundred foot tall Mount Southington. <laughs> and uh, other than that, I would just get out of the state. It's not I, I don't know. I think it was a good spot to grow up. Um, I can't see myself living there under the age of forty. I yeah, that's gotcha. just my take on it. No, it's, I, that's a pretty that's solid fair. take. I mean, that's I feel fair. like you covered all the bases there. I feel like it made it pretty good. So yeah. I got waters here. Nice. <laughs> I was like, what's back there? No. Lost it. Um, no, okay, cool. That's fair. Yeah. So what was your, like, you know, you said you went to, where'd you go to college? Uh, here in Rhode Island. I actually went to Roger Williams. Okay. That's right. Okay. Yeah. We had this conversation. Yeah, I yeah, remember yeah. this now. Now I'm recalling because Bristol is where my wife is from. Also one of my very good friends, Ryan went to Roger Williams. So there you go. Beautiful area over there. What did it you is... think about that? Was was that your like first real Rhode Island experience? Yeah, I had actually, I had been to Newport a couple of times in high school. This is going to sound so like air. I was on the sailing team in high school <laughs> <laughs> as well as the swim team. It's like the most Connecticut thing ever. And I, I love this. Um, I'm from Connecticut, and I went to Roger Williams, and I only traveled to Newport. Yeah, I was like, this is... I sound like a jackass sound, No, you right sound... Now. You don't. You don't. You sound so Connecticut. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I... We had a couple of races in Newport in high school, so I went there a couple times. So that was, like, the biggest thing of the year. We yeah. Like go to Newport. Everyone was psyched about it. Oh, yeah. It was beautiful sailing yeah. there. It's, yeah. it's a very popular... It's a great pl place to be doing sailing. Oh, yeah. Sure. So we... Um, we did that in high school. So I, I got a taste. I got a little taste. And then I started, I got into hiking towards the end of high school. Oh, okay. And so I was looking at Roger Williams. I also looked at some schools up in like Vermont, New Hampshire, because I was thinking, do I want to go coast? Do I want to go mountains? What's, right. what's the deal there? So I was very close to going to UVM mm. um, up in Burlington, but I decided on Roger Williams, a lot smaller, but I had a good time there. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a yeah. good spot. Where'd yeah. you? Did you go out a lot? 
Um, yeah, actually came to Providence more than Newport, I'd say. Oh, okay. Um, because it's kind of right in the middle. Right. You take yeah. the the ripped. Uh, Either way, it's like right. two bucks. Great for a college. Kid. I, I love that you're taking the bus and you take the Ripta. Like these are things I've never done before. Yeah. Like I've never yeah. like I took the train. We took the train. Vin and I once to go to the Patriots parade. Oh yeah. yeah. And on Sundays you can take the T. Uh, you can take the T from T F Green Airport yeah. up yep. to Patriots. Like right at Gillette. Yeah. Oh really? So yeah. So it's like right in the back. It's like yeah. twenty bucks like round trip. Yeah. And you don't have to park. It's like yeah. super clutch. The only thing that sucks is they give you twenty minutes after games end to get to the train. Yeah. I'm like. Dude, yeah. three Jeez. beers. I right? I couldn't even find the bathroom, let alone yeah, try to get Olympic back to a train. Right there. Jeez. Get yeah. out, get out. Yeah. yeah. Not that's to mention fun. if it went to overtime. Anyways, yeah. but yeah, no, that's it's so I was funny. Say, but you, you said the commuter rail, and I had to think about that. Like that's the that's the train. Yeah, he asked me, like, is that the train? I was like, yes, that's the train. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm uh, very resourceful. Transport guy. That's yeah. yeah, that's smart. Wicked Absolutely. smart. So did so you never went out to like? Did you go out to like Aiden's downtown or? Went so what, to how Aiden's. old are you? I'm 29. Okay, yeah. yeah. So you would have gone like Judge Roy Bean. Oh yeah, yeah all yeah. those spots. Okay, I, those um, are good spots. I went there a lot. Yeah, I graduated 2017. Okay, Williams. cool. Yeah. Awesome. Um, what, what? When did you graduate, Nichols? 14. 14. Okay, so three. Oh, okay, that makes sense. They whooped my are. Yep. Yeah, it was bad. I played <laughs> lacrosse for Nichols, so. Nice. My high school swim coach went to Nichols. Here. Who? I don't know why I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't heard that name in like 12 yeah. years. Very small yeah. school. Yeah, They've yeah, come yeah. a long way. Sports teams are really good. Well, I mean, we were good at hockey and soccer then. Is basketball is popular. Uh, well, basketball. They had that one. So we had one kid who was like the typical New England white guy, but was lights out. Everything was like Paul Pierce slow. Sure. But he was lights out, set all the records, was just unreal. And then after that, they just... just and now Continue they get to grow all their kinds of recruits and guys who can dunk. No problem. Nobody could dunk. <laughs> Where are they finding these? People? I love yeah. that the standard for us it, no, is like he can yeah. dunk a basketball. Uh, he, listen, How impressive! Everyone, no, like very rarely, a guy, the guys could dunk. Yeah, Nichols, and now they all can. I Every just remember seeing player. that one video of that kid that yeah. it was like a highlight reel where he was doing yeah. this crazy wind. I was like, who Nichols? No offense, what? if you watch this, he wasn't very good at playing basketball. He could just jump really high. <laughs> Super athletic. I heard they're not drug testing there anymore. No, <laughs> definitely not. Definitely yeah. not. We finally got some winners, so you know. Awesome. So you went to Roger Williams. <laughs> um, so you said you started to get into hiking mm-hmm. around. That time? Like senior year, senior year of high school. Yeah, okay. So, like, how did that develop? Like, where did the interest come for? Because before we dive into the characters and the people, let's give some backstory as to why yeah. you do this. Because, obviously, there is serious experience involved in that. And I would yeah. love for people to kind of hear your story on how you got into hiking as a sport, as a hobby, as for what sure. you've made it. Yeah, I um, started doing it. Uh, my dad always took us camping every year. And we would uh, do a hike, like, usually one hike on this camping trip. And 2012, we hiked Mount Washington, which Oof. was super cool. And my, my dad had told us about it, like, before we went up. So I did a little research, found out it was, like, the highest point in New England. Yep. So I was like, this is going to be sick. So just to be clear, you hiked Mount Washington on car. your feet. Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah. He hiked. <laughs> he doesn't have a sticker for his car, yes. but he used his feet to the highest point in New England. Yes. But you drove it in your car, and you put... A reward sticker on it, just to clarify. Okay, he doesn't have it tattooed either. Walked with his bare feet. <laughs> you put your foot on the gas. I'm just saying, you're the one who needs the bumper sticker. Yeah, I'm passionate. I, um, Sorry, I've seen. No, no, no. I've done some content on those bumper stickers. <laughs> Drive me nuts, dude. Everywhere, yes. everywhere. Yeah. everywhere. Um, and when I walked up, I I think the line for the summit photo, like at at the sign up there, it was like it was like a 20 minute wait to get a photo yeah. at this sign. And I'm like, I've got like blisters on my feet, <laughs> covered in dirt, seeing these people in flip flops and strollers, which I'm all for accessibility, but can I get a photo quick? Yeah. Like that's <laughs> I don't want to be dramatic, but you know, yeah. I earned this yeah. guys. Can I get my picture so I can go yeah. back down? Cause this is going to take say, me all night. I do night. have to go back down. So please yeah. let me skip the line. You should yeah. get a fast pass. Yeah. Like, like an easy pass up if there. If you walk, you that? should get to skip and be right in front of all the people who drove. That's actually a great idea. Mount Washington people. Anyone that drove to the top needs to wait for hikers to get their pictures first. Thanks. You, bam. Dog. New England. Make it happen. So New England pod first. Give us the eagle for yeah, that one. Do the call. <laughs> this soundboard is nuts. Isn't it awesome? <laughs> that is sick. <laughs> He's got an array of things on there. Okay, I'm sorry. So you hiked Mount Washington first time. Yep. Um, kind of uh, mm-hmm. spiraled from there in a good way, I guess. Spiraled up. And uh, went to back to college um, and needed a summer job. So I applied for this 
summer camp in New Hampshire as like they had like this outdoor program where you could like lead hikes, backpacking trips, do some climbing. So I'm like, oh, this will be great for um for a summer what well, between semesters. And I ended up being there for like nine years. Uh, more or less every like the whole summer. Towards the end it was like uh, I'd go for like a week or two. But it turned into like such a cool thing. I met all these sweet people, um, in the outdoor industry, people who worked um ski seasons like the whole nine yards um and met people from all over the world so i I did that hiked a lot of the at in new hampshire hiked most of the four thousand footers up there and um that kind of drew me to long distance backpacking so from there i did a lot of research on the at um, which runs right through new england starts in georgia goes up to maine Thank and you for clarifying. I was going to ask. Yes, yes. Yeah. I mean, I knew, but I, because I researched this to make sure I knew, but I wanted them to know and you. Yep. I'm not, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I did put this on my list of things I wanted to accomplish in my life. Let's so. go. Once now again, I guess, guy. Is, guy. once again, my guy. guess is going to inspire me. What are you, late 20s? Uh, 32. 32. Yeah, yeah 32. Time. Sure. You got all the time in the world. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it'll I'll be, tell my wife. <laughs> she won't think that's a great idea. I'm going to hey. disappear and walk the AT for a little bit. Be back in, you know, maybe a month or two. There you go. There you go. Um, I've seen families do it, I'll say. Yeah. I've seen families do it. So. Fun story. Real quick, not to detract you here. Went to Hawaii with my wife. Awesome trip. We went to one of the pillboxes. Okay, excuse me. The pillbox, which was on Lanakai Beach, was... What's, what's a pillbox? So um, in I've, I think I'm getting this right, but they call it like the pillbox, but it's uh, like old bunkers that they had okay. from back in the day. And now they're like graffiti and stuff, but you can walk to the top of them. You can hang out. It's really cool. It's like a great, I think I'm saying that right. I, we'll go with it. Maybe Google that for me, Ben. We, <laughs> one day we're going to be famous enough that we have like a TV <laughs> to bring up, but look up the Lanakai Beach pillbox. Make sure I'm getting that correct. I'll take your word for it. Yeah, you're right. Let's go. Let's go. And you two sons of bitches, well, that son of a bitch was making a face at me. He was. He always does. He's like, what the hell is a pillbox? <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, so uh, my wife and I, like, we hiked that when we were there. But I really wanted to hike a trail while I was there. Quick, took a all trails map look at this one. It was like four hours. I was like, cool, two hours up, two hours down. Yep. Wrong. Four hours up, four hours down. <laughs> Here's the Perfect. kicker. I was obsessed with renting a moped while we were on the island. I had my motorcycle's license. However, it was not put on my license properly. So I had to jump through a bunch of hoops to get them to let me rent this moped with my motorcycle's license for some reason. Yep. Okay. I finally get this damn thing rented and I take us to this hike, which in turn took us the entire time that I had the damn moped rented. <laughs> and I, and my poor wife, like she's not like a hiker and it was, I don't even know what the, you know, the height was. It was a wonderful, wonderful, but it took us, yeah. It took us literally like five or six hours. And it's she like was like, what the hell? Yeah. She's like, I want to be like on the beach and you got me on this damn hike. It was <laughs> awful. They always get you with the uh, the one-way mileage. I don't know what it is. Yeah. I mean, like, I feel like if uh, someone as yourself that knows what they're doing is probably going to be like, okay, this makes a lot more sense. But I was just like, cool. One mile down the road, we can start a hike. Because everyone does like the, cra- <laughs> the crater that's there to see the sunrise, sunset. It's like the main nice. the one near uh, Waikiki Beach. But... Anyways, that's sweet. Continue with your story that I completely sidetracked for selfish reasons. No, you can sidetrack all you want. I um, I don't want to bore you with my life story. But no, I, that's what I you're here for, man. Bore us away. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, yeah. So I worked at that camp. Started talking to people about the AT. Um, talked to an old coworker who had hiked in 2017, um, south to north. He went northbound, and he was telling me just like a little bit about it. The more I learned about it, I'm like, this is something I'm gonna do. So 2019, I just finished grad school. I did a year of grad school for teaching. And I, before I got, before I got a job, just flew down to Georgia and did the thing. That's so, so awesome. That's so cool. It was like, yeah, I didn't want to get locked into anything. I figured that was a good time to do it. And mm. yeah, just kind of full sent it. That's, That's so awesome. sick. Yeah. So tell us about your experience. Like, give advice for people how long did it take you what was it like did you hit a a point where you were like maybe i need to stop did what motivated you like i want to know the whole kit and caboodle yeah there uh it took about four and a half months i'd say yeah it was i started march 10th and finished like july 20th somewhere around there um so it was uh it was a long time it wasn't it was longer than any hike i had done before the most i'd done was like five days i think in new hampshire 
And so I was like, am I going to be able to do this? That was my main question. So I just kind of went in thinking of it as like a bunch of five day hikes pieced together. Mm. And you would just, you can always hitch into town. If you cross a road, just get a ride, go resupply on food and uh, just keep plunking away at it. And I remember this one time down in Georgia, it was mile 30. I felt like I had just lived like an entire lifetime. It was like day three on the trail. <laughs> I was doing 10 miles a day. This is a 2,200 mile hike. So if you do the math, that's going to be a lot of days out there. So right. I, I looked at the map. There's this place called Neil Gap. It's the first resupply for hikers. People usually quit there. I think 40% of hikers quit at Neil Gap. Oh, shit. Okay, interesting. And there's a map there. I remember it shows the whole trail. And there was one of those, like, you are here oh. icons. Oh, man. And I kid you not, this map was maybe four five feet tall. <laughs> I had gone maybe, like an inch <laughs> half an inch <laughs> and i'm like i feel like i'm on my deathbed right now and i still gotta hike another 20 21 50 out of this wow. Jeez. so that's daunting yeah i am luckily i had met people day one like this really sweet group of people um at the first campsite and we all hit it off we were like bantering the whole time like the days flew by because we after this point, the days flew by uh, mileage wise because we were just talking and and kind of hitting it off and just having fun, you know. That's awesome. And uh, so it got to a point where the miles started coming. Your trail legs came in. We were hitting 25, 30 mile days at some points. And uh, before you knew it, you're up in Maine. And New England, I think, is the best part of the whole trail, in my opinion. Oh, there you Especially go. Especially like cool. New Hampshire, Maine. Yeah unbelievable yeah so beautiful yeah that's cool that's so awesome yeah very sweet. very cool now we'll take this opportunity early since where it's the subject of it yeah you have a documentary going on about it yeah so not about this trail oh okay actually, i'm sorry okay that's okay There's that's all right more. not to sound pretentious no no i love it okay that's <laughs> that was my mistake i love it <laughs> we're only in 2019 well, i mean i'm i'm infatuated God, i think I this is like fantastic right no now. dude you're good you're good no <laughs> yeah People are going to love this. All right. Um, but I, I do have a documentary of a, another hike that I did later on coming out. Okay. At the end of the, probably in the new year. Uh, my brother and one of my good friends are hiking or helping me with it. So um, AT and then a couple years went by. I kind of got that hiking itch again. And I had talked to people about like the logical next step for through hiking. Like where do people go after they finish the AT? They come back to society. They're working their day jobs. They, they get in this mindset of like, what am I doing when I could be out in the woods? Right. Just like right. seeing these beautiful views, thinking only about what food I'm going to eat, where I'm going to sleep, rather than how am I going to pay rent and right. pay all these bills. So I naturally got that itch. Um, I had been working a job, a teaching job up in New Hampshire. Um, I loved it, by the way. I was teaching eighth grade, and I uh, did that for a couple of years. During COVID, this is like 2019, 2020, yeah, I was going to say, this is right when COVID kind of really hit the fan. Yeah, yeah. So. so it got to a point where the pandemic had been going on for a while. I finished out the school year at this school. I knew I wanted to move somewhere else further down the line. I was outside of Manchester, New Hampshire at the time, and I wanted more of like a young crowd, more going on. So I knew I wanted to move. So I found that to be a perfect transitional point where I could maybe go attempt one of these trails again. And so... I made plans to go hike the Pacific Crest Trail, or the PCT, which is pretty much the sister or brother of the AT on the West Coast. So it runs from mm -hmm. Canada to Mexico um, through Oregon, Washington, California. Oh, man, that must have been incredible. So, so pretty. M much more scenic than the AT, but just both of them are such great experiences in their own yeah, right. Yeah, I can imagine. Um, I could talk for an hour about the differences between I was going to say, you made a really interesting video that I watched and you kind of talked about, you know, TikTok version, but you, you hit on a few things of the differences in the two. Can you hit on a couple just so people, you know, because obviously the trails, you know, north, south, you're going up there. Yeah. You complimented the AT towards the end of being in New England. What's the difference? Um, the PCT is a little bit longer. It's 2,600 miles compared to 2,200 miles. And, uh, believe it or not, yeah, AT is a little bit shorter, pretty much. Yeah. Um, but a little more rugged, I would say, terrain-wise. PCT is a little more gradual. It's meant as um, a path for, like, stock animals or, uh, like, horses and whatnot. 
they're able to travel it. Whereas the AT is just like, oh, there's a mountain. Let's go straight up this thing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, PCT knows what a switchback is. So it's a little more gradual on right. elevation. You right. get up to much higher elevation. Um, and there are much more, like many more vistas and like really cool views. But um, definitely easier on the knees, I would say. Yeah. Um, AT is a lot rainier. So you get a lot more, you know, yeah. from New England. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Summer months, buggier, rainier, um, rockier, for sure. Uh, but the PCT is um, its just like a different beast. Yeah. It, there's a lot more environmental factors, I would say, okay. in terms of wildfires. and Oh, shit. That's um, a, a, I didn't even think of that. Yeah, yeah. Heat waves, snow. It's all things you have to think about on the uh, the PCT a lot more than the AT. Yeah. So, Interesting. Just a couple. That's cool. Good friggin' morning from New England, folks. This episode of the So New England podcast is brought to you by Iggy's R.I. Iggy's R.I. serves their award-winning clam cakes, chowder, doughboys, and more at two beautiful locations, one in Narragansett and one in Warwick, Rhode Island. If you're visiting the Oakland Beach location, don't forget, Iggy's Boardwalk is a full-service restaurant. They also have Iggy's Creamery. But in case you miss a taste of home, don't forget, Iggy's R.I. ships worldwide on Gold Belly right to your front door. Iggy's also offers catering for your next event, as well as their very own food truck, bringing their Rhode Island tradition directly to you. For more questions, visit Iggy'sRI.com. And remember, folks, it's always, always summer, summer at, at Iggy's. Because you also said something in there about how it's set up as well. Um, how it's, I was trying to think of a way to ask this, so I'm just going to say it. And if I'm totally wrong, just be like, dude, you're wrong. You're an idiot. <laughs> but I feel like when you explained it, they make it almost more for lack of a better term, touristy, because you have more stops, right? And yeah. W- like, because you, you said the PCT was more stops so than the other one? I'd say the PCT had, like, longer distances to get to towns. Oh, okay, that's like, right. Yep. Yeah, so resupply is, like, logistically, it's a little harder to hike the PCT because you have a lot more to consider in terms of food carries mm. and water resupply. Um down in the southern part of California, there's some parts where you go 30 miles between water sources. You have to carry. I was carrying like four and a half liters of water at one point. Um, wow. Which is and heavy. to explain that in gallons for the people who don't understand, simple, <laughs> what would that what would that be in gallons? Yeah, well, hold on. These waters. What are these? A liter? No, these are half a liter. Like two thirds of a liter, but um, gallons. I would probably say I don't know. This is a math question, right? Yeah, like I, yeah I don't know. Smart waters. That sounds right. Yeah, Google yeah, yeah. it. As well, a math what, can guy. we get that in smart waters? Yeah, yeah. how many? I'd say like four or gallon? five of these, five of these, six of these. <laughs> not, not like that. that I don't get it. I yeah, know what the answer the is, but for the viewers, <laughs> I feel like I'm having a Michael Scott moment. <laughs> for it's the a lot of who gallons don't of water. Expl- yeah. Explain it like they're idiots. Yeah, yeah. How many gallons? Is he looking it up? How many liters in a gallon? Just Google Just look it. that up. How many smart waters? <laughs> Talking to the so microphone. One, so one gallon is uh, 3.7 liters. Okay, so you're carrying yeah. a little over a gallon then. Yeah, a gallon and a half, something okay. like that. That's which a lot. Is like, that's a lot. Yeah, like that's, normally, not, that's heavy though. Yeah, when, yeah, when you're hiking like up a mountain and you've got like all this weight on your shoulders. Not to mention like, it like sways and moves, so yeah. it kind of gets yeah, a little off balance. Got to secure it. But, um, secure the bag. Exactly. <laughs> so PCT like a little more challenging like planning wise. You got to yeah. be a little more careful because you could screw yourself over yeah. if you, you're not prepared in a certain section. So, But other than that, like. Two awesome trips. Like yeah. You should so get out cool. How long did the uh, PCT take? Uh, I actually did the PCT quicker than the AT, which is even was though it surprising was to me. Yeah. Okay. I was able to do more miles per day just because of the terrain differences. Okay. I was able to didn't wasn't as exhausting because it wasn't up and down because of the switchback. You're saying it was yeah. Like, I think I think that was the case. Or I just I don't maybe I just pushed myself a little bit more. Yeah. Or I had more felt like I had to get there quicker. Something like that. And there's some days you right? knew too. Because you went and you'd already kind of done it before. Yeah. Right. Kind yeah. For, you know, lack of a better way to say it. Yeah, yeah, I guess I was a little more efficient with mm. and knew the ins and the outs of it. So um, I'd say about, it was four months. It was uh, July to November. Okay. That's cool. Cool. Yeah. yeah. So of, may doesn't have to be of the two, but of these hiking experiences or any other ones that you have had, is there any moment when you were doing this that was kind of like a an oh shit moment where whether it was like you got, you know, your bear came to a bear came to your camp or like you were low on supplies and you're too far away or you weren't feeling like 
you were physically not feeling well and you felt like you might have to quit. Like what's like a horror story. And then also let's end it on a good or a better, gooder note, Jesus Christ on a better note where you tell us like a moment where it felt like you were in your flow state. It was an aha moment. The views were crazy. The vibes were good. Like I'd love to hear both. Yeah. So I think the, um, the most down in the dumps I was on the trail, uh, in terms of like my health or like what I, what I was doing. Um, I actually ended up attempting the trail. I should have started with this attempted the trail in 2021. Okay. Um, which is when I left my job in New Hampshire and lasted a week. I had injured my knee before the trip had been going to PT for like a month before road tripped out there with my brothers or my brother and my friend and started the trail, got a week in and realized my knee was just not going to happen. Oh, that, oh, that sucks. Brutal. So I flew home, worked a teaching job for a year, flew back out in 2022, and that's the year I did the trail. Okay, so gotcha. Should have started with that, but... No, um, it's okay. Sorry sorry to bring that up. You're no, like, thanks, no. asshole. I was trying to avoid <laughs> no, the fact that no, that happened. Not, I wasn't avoiding the <laughs> subject. I just, for some reason, forgot. Yeah, but, um, that's all right. You still conquered it. Dude, that's you still amazing. did something yeah, that so 1% cool. of the human population wouldn't even try, let alone yeah. be able to complete. So oh, yeah, that's yeah. amazing, dude. That's like so yeah. cool. Good for you to be able to yeah. do that. Thank you. It was a really, really sweet moment, like... When I finally broke through, my knee was like healthy in 2022 and I was able to do it because it was super emotional getting off trail that one year in 2021. And that's yeah. a big part of the documentary that we're having that we have coming out. I'm is so excited for that. Talking about that, so that cool. experience and the disappointment of having to get off a trail like that. Yeah. You, you prep so much for it and you have all this hype building up in your head. And then a week later, you're like, oh, that's it. Ugh. So. That's so cool. You know, it's, um, there's someone, and, I, and right now I'm, I'm forgetting his name. You probably know who he is, but he was the first individual to um, cross Antarctica by himself with just a sled. He's I know like, exactly who you're talking he's about. He's very I was famous. I about this. I don't know who I, I saw, I, you know, probably 2017, 18 is when I first came across him. Yeah. Um, but he was like, you know, I, I was at the height of like trying to find motivation in my life. And this guy was like, so awesome. But he was the first person I ever got a true look at what preparation kind of goes into these things. Yeah. And like, you know, he was working with a PT. Obviously this was a guy that at this point was famed for what his accomplishments. So his resources were much different, sure. but he had this physical trainer where he was putting his hands in ice for 10 minutes and then coming out and then having to do like these ambidextrous, like all of these dexterity things so that he could hike without, getting frostbite and being able to like you can i didn't know you could train your yeah hands I, to not get frostbite yeah i mean i guess it was more just about how to not like panic oh, when okay. your hands yeah, are like yeah. you know because there would be times where you know when he's in our uh, antarctica and things are starting to go awry he has to set up a tent quickly so yeah. he can get himself into like away from the elements yeah and you know at some yeah. of those points some of those sh little pieces are too small you gotta take your gloves off oh yeah but it's negative 50 degrees yeah. and you got to be able to keep the dexterity going because you know Christ, I yeah. go sledding for 20 minutes and I'm like, I can't even move my <laughs> mouth anymore. I'm, and it's like 35 degrees out. Yeah. So that's <laughs> yeah. nuts. But that's yeah, nice. but I just, I can't imagine what the preparation goes into. Yeah. It's um actually like I, I made it sound like a ton of prep. It's more like mental prep. I'd say Yeah, mm -hmm. like hiking. I feel like hiking. you're selling yourself short here. No, 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 no. Not even like you talk to any <laughs> through hiker and I believe this like super strongly that anybody can through hike one of these trails. Anybody, if they want to. Um, your body really like adapts to that environment. Like hiking the first couple weeks, your body hurts so much. Right. And it gets to a point where you just have what's called the hiker hobble and you're walking around and it's just like, you get to a point where your body just gets used to it and <laughs> you get your trail legs and it becomes second nature. Like every day, you know, you wake up, break down camp, hike, set up camp, repeat. And it's more a mental struggle because mm. your, your, your legs are going to adjust to it one way or another. Yeah. Um, that's fascinating. Yeah. Yeah. So if you want to do it, man. Oh yeah. I mean, it. I have, so <laughs> actually the first, the first hike that I've been, um, aspiring myself personally to do is the West Highland way in yes, Scotland. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, it's a hundred miles. People can do it in five days. Most people do it in seven to eight. I really want to go to Scotland. You know, my wife wants to go too, but like, I'm also like, I need that experience. Like I need to like to be alone. Like I want to be in the elements. I want to challenge myself because I know like day one, I'm going to do fucking 15 miles. Like it's nothing. I'm going to be motivated. And then when I wake up day two and I'm like sore like, and then I'm tired. And I also want to remove myself from the fact that like, if I started like in new England to try and do the AT, I'd be like, 
I could just go home. It's only a car. It's <laughs> yeah, a car right away. Right but I'm in stop. fucking Scotland, yeah. and you know I'm in the middle of the Highlands, and it's like you're not going anywhere, pal. Yeah, like yeah. you got thousands of dollars invested. Like you gotta, yeah. you know. Also, no phone. Home. Not a lot of people know this about me, but I, like I'm a pretty emotional guy. Yep. So like I also want that experience of like it being so hard that like I physically and mentally break down, and yeah. I'm in by myself in the Highlands, just like crying. Yeah, you want to hit rock and then that, bottom exactly, yeah. and then yeah. I want David Goggins in my ear. Who's going to carry the boats, motherfucker? <laughs> and then I just push through. You know what I mean? Dude, the um, the West Highland Way, I was actually hiking with this Scottish dude on the PCT. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, his his name, accent the whole time must have been so motivating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was actually insane. I was telling him all about, like, American sports. He was telling me all about, like, Scottish stuff. Yeah. And uh, we were talking about the West Highland Way. He actually, like, invited us a bunch, a bunch of us out to, like, stay with him, and then we could go hike it. Yeah. And so cool. he was telling me that, Every night out there, like you're in this remote wilderness, but then at the end of every day, you get to like a pub. Right. <laughs> that's, and that's why I thought it was like so you're cool. Like, it's like every 10 to 12 miles, like yeah. the town is there. Like they have pubs like set up for people who are hiking. Yeah. Imagine like you're that's struggling awesome. through the woods and you come out of the woods and you're like, you want to get a pint? Yeah. yeah it's like it's every so cool. day. Yeah. Every day. I would love that. Yeah. That's it, awesome. And that's why I like that. It seems like there, it was like the happy medium between your first time doing it, first time solo packing and trying to do all that. But also, yeah, you're not so far off. It seems like the most remote part of it is actually like the last 30 miles. So it's almost like you're kind of you have like a little assistance, and then the last one's like, all right, you sure. can do this, For you sure. know? Yeah. Get, up and get on through there. Exactly. Yeah, so those cool. like um, I've always been fascinated by some of those trails that like you don't have to devote as much time to do, but right. they're like equally as beautiful, like the Colorado Trail, right? Mm-hmm. Or um, the Long Trail in Vermont. Like those yeah. are some of the ones I really want to do Vermont, not very underrated i mean oh, yeah in the yeah. sense that like uh, most new englanders are like oh yeah vermont but like people who are from vermont they'll tell you and they'll show you just how beautiful but that's why you don't hear much about it because they're like no we want to keep this our yeah. baby we don't want the rest of new england <laughs> they don't to like screw to this for us there. Oh, yeah. i've never been to colorado he has though yes. and he like what was your experience yeah. like out so, there <clears throat> I, I was. Oh, I didn't even realize. Oh my it. god, what a dork! I didn't I, even realize I, you wore I, a high Colorado I didn't sweatshirt. Bring this for nothing. I, I thought to it was show so, off for our guests. <laughs> here. So, and let me see your hat. What now, is this? This is my other national park adventure. This one was nowhere near as fun as this Damn, one. This is, I was giving him the alley oop. Fourteen for episodes in, and this is the first time that he has ever <laughs> not worn a Life's Better in New England or So New England podcast shirt. I thought it was so it's, weird that you weren't wearing it's it. Across my butt cheeks, life's better. Um, so <laughs> the I will say, so I didn't actually hike any of these things. So White Sands. This is, is his Mount Washington sticker, right? Yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So White Sands was very, very cool, but it's one of those things where you could literally drive by and you're like, all right, cool, I did that. It's just sand. There's is no that, water. That's There's not the sand, sand dunes one yeah. in Colorado. That's the one with the massive. No, sand no, no. Dunes. This is in New Mexico. This oh, one. okay. This, right. So Estes Park is if you if you ever go. Anywhere in Colorado, besides the Rockies, obviously. Because when you're from New England and you talk about mountains, mm-hmm. and then you go to a place like Colorado, <laughs> and you're like... Very different. Those little hills over there, those aren't mountains, silly. <laughs> right. But when you go to Colorado, you're like, oh my God. So we went to Estes Park, yeah, which is pretty much the town before National Park. Okay. Is that what it's called? I don't, I don't know. You're asking Rocky Mountain. Mountain. Rocky Mountain. Sorry. Yeah. Duh. I say that like I've been there. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. I knew one of you guys would know to help me out. I don't I know. Forgot. Because that's the mountain the guy right there. So we uh, <clears throat> we were gonna ride horses. That was our big thing, and yes. we couldn't get into the Rockies because of some typical day pass thing you had to get the app for and blah blah blah. But the horses were gonna bring us to the Rockies, which was the coolest thing. Now, that's if cool. you've never ridden a horse before, it's insane how strong they are now i'm about i was probably like what 220 at the time so this horse was massive maybe 225 there it is (laughs) (laughs) camera adds 10 pounds yeah so when the coolest part to me was when i'm going so it was like a hour and a half two hour trail with the with horses and right you you know you go through you get a whole tour guide my horse merlin absolute savage the only person who had a rule for their horse was me and I got him. They were like, oh, yeah, don't let him drift too far. And I'm like, what am I going to do? You think I'm not just going to let this guy go eat? Like, if he goes over there, I'm going too. Merlin's got to eat, baby. <laughs> yeah. So we got like, I don't know, three quarters of the way through the trail. And at this point in time, we're like deep into the mountains, kind of. Not super high up, but just in there. 
And I'm doing one of these, like, oh, my God, this is so cool. Because now, mind you, this horse, I'm 225. This horse is carrying me like you would carry a backpack to school with, like, two books in it. <laughs> or maybe a box of pencils for those who don't have their books. I never had my books. Sound familiar? <laughs> <laughs> and it was just so cool. So all of a sudden, I'm sitting there, and I feel a tree. And I'm like, oh, I'm going to stir more. Next thing you know, he's sh- scratching his gigantic back with my leg in between him and the tree. It was the coolest thing. She's like, oh, kick off. I'm like, are you serious? I'm not going to kick a horse. Ugh. No, kick off the okay. tree to get him away. I'm like. You're going to tear your ACL. That's what I said. I'm like, no, he can. If my leg's crushed, we're good. Merlin's cool. Ugh. But he was the coolest horse. But fun. that was my fun story I wanted to bring to the podcast. No, I love that. That was a so, good yeah. story. That's but cool. I I, you never told that story before. Out of, out of my uh, wardrobe today. So he so hiked with a horse in Colorado. Yeah. So there you I go. I was that. brought. Love I was that. the best. Just a bunch of hikers. Vin, you ever hiked before? Can't say I have. Lose. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You got a bunch of hikers over here. Yeah. So. You fell down the Black Diamond at Yagu once. <laughs> I have that on video. Yagu over here. Little it's Yagu. Um. We were on the chairlift, and he was face planted, and I was like, Vin, that's not how you do it. I have it on my phone. It's a great video. (laughs) Have you been to Yaga? Yeah. So my my brother lives right down the street, and he actually was like a snowboard instructor there for years. Really? Yeah, because he he actually lived up in Vermont as well at Mount Snow, and he was an instructor there for a few years as well. So he's like the extreme sports guy. There you go. Middle middle brother? Yeah, middle brother. And then my oldest brother is the... (laughs) (laughs) I got an older, younger. There you go. uh, Outdoorsy guy. That's awesome. That's how it goes. So Yagu... Quick question before yes. we move on. Um, isn't the highest point in Rhode Island like someone's backyard? Yes, it is. And it's also, I think, is and not only is it the highest point, but I think it's right on the border of Connecticut Got in it. the sense that, like, it says, like, Rhode Island's highest. I might be totally getting this wrong, so someone will call me out in the comments for sure. But there's a, a, a spot where it says, like, there's, like, a stick, and it's, like, Rhode Island's highest point, and it's, like, Connecticut. You can, like, jump back and <laughs> Well, the forth. funny, Connecticut's highest point is on the border of Massachusetts. Oh, there you go. Yeah. So it's, like, you're working your way up. <laughs> yeah. new to where all the mountains are. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Gearing back to our kind of basic conversation. Yes. <laughs> so we don't get too far out. How does your experiences with your trail bring you to content creation? Yeah. And one of the big things I want to ask, because you've mentioned it a few times, are you a day walker? Are you a nine to fiver? Or are you a full time content creator? Um, I so I was a day walker. I've never heard that term. I yeah. just made I it up. I thought about is. it because I've been thinking about Blade. I thought that was vampires. Yes. Yeah, like what it is? You, I'm thinking like Walking Dead right now. I I'm thought sorry. that that was like some sort of particular career. It's like from a, Blade. Know your Marvel. I also thought he meant to say like dog walker, and I was no. like, uh, he no, I meant day don't walk dogs. <laughs> don't walk dogs. I'm also allergic to horses, so that story didn't resonate. Oh with my god, <laughs> Merlin, you jerk. <laughs> no, I um, I was a teacher for on and off for like four and a half years. Um. My last year teaching was 2022, 2023. Okay. Um, and then I decided to try content full time, and I've been doing that ever since. So it's been like a year and a half now. Oh, okay, That's cool. Awesome. I'm loving it. Loving Good it. for you. It's been going well. You pump out a lot of content, you do. too. I've been trying, yeah. No, yeah. But I'm just saying, like, you know, because there are a lot of different levels to content creating, so to have original content and writing your own scripts and being able to pump it out as much as you do. I'm like, that's incredibly impressive yeah. because I get sick of myself. So I'm like, I don't even want to talk to myself about another idea. Like just leave me alone. <laughs> so it's like really, really cool. And it's always high quality too. It's not just like, you know, I putting try. a video out to put it out. Yeah. I have, there are definitely days where I'm like, I have writer's block. I don't know yeah. what to do. And you get it. Right. Being in the business. And it's like, it's one of those things that you got to kind of push through. And like some days are so much better than others. Some days I'm like, I'm going to fail at this. Other yeah. days I'm like, wow, I'm doing so well right now. Right, right, um, right. <laughs> so it's um it's definitely a roller coaster of a a career, yeah. I would say. Um but I've been loving it. So going from hiking to that, I got off the PCT and started making like informative videos. Before the PCT, I was mm-hmm. doing TikTok. Um I really wasn't posting on Instagram at all. I had like 2000 followers on Instagram, like 70,000 on TikTok, I think. And I posted a couple compilation videos from the PCT and the AT and people were asking questions about through hiking. So it was more like answering people's questions. I was yeah. like a, a Q and a, or like frequently asked questions bot on some website. I was just like pumping out like information about people who are interested in through hiking. Mm-hmm. And then I did a couple videos with like trending audio, mm-hmm. um, but kept it in the hiking niche. And one of them went viral where it was like some guy, backpacking who's eating like ramen and then there are these like 
day hike or like car campers that are eating like steak tips in the back of their car on a yeah. <laughs> grill. And he's looking over eating like cold mashed potatoes out of your like jet boil. And so that kind of popped off. And so I started making more of those. And then I did a week long series of like every person who moves to this city. So I right. started with like Boulder, Colorado or Burlington, Vermont. And I just created a character. And for that whole week, my video, my views like skyrocketed mm. and I would be teaching during the day. I'd write a script during like my free period, come home, film it. And for a week straight, I was getting like consistently high views on these videos. So I'm like, Oh, maybe I'll like keep doing this for a little while. Um, went on the PCT, took a long break from that. Um, did some like vlog style content on the PCT, which was fun, but I feel like I wasn't creative enough. I wanted to, I like writing and writing like comedy sketches. Yeah. Um, and so when I got back, I had moved to Boston or Somerville. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. And, cut that, uh, cut that. yeah, yeah, cut yeah, that. yeah. And I, um, started filming, those same skits in my new apartment and within like a month I gained like 150,000 followers on Instagram. It was like, I started posting reels yeah, and that just blew up. And from there I just kept going, um, worked another school year. And then at the end of that year decided to try and go full time. That's so Good awesome. for yeah. you. Thank you. That's so Thank cool. You. That yeah. so. How about like students? Did anyone ever see your stuff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was, was one eighth, day. It was eighth grade, you said, right? Eighth so. grade. Eighth grade. <laughs> um, a couple students. It was like the bell rang. Kids came into the school, and I just hear yelling down the hall. They're like, "Mr. Lyons, we found your TikTok." <laughs> oh man! <laughs> <laughs> I knew it was going to be a hell of a day. Yeah, um, absolutely. And so my coworkers, like the immediate team that I was working with. Um, they loved watching the videos. They were like big into it. They're like, this is awesome. So we would sometimes just like, they would come into my room and they would put on my videos on my projector oh, so, <laughs> during lunch. And I'm what, like, we what don't do, have to what, do this. Just right like, what am I doing? Yeah. Have awesome. you seen Matt's videos? Yeah, yeah, and you're yeah. like, I don't know. What do I do with my hands here? This is exactly. <laughs> so they, um, we kind of, the students didn't know for like half the year. I was like, how have they not found at least one of them? I was right. Like, I was like, this is really lucky. Yeah. And then the floodgates opened this one day. But then the next day, radio silence. Because I found, like, the kids don't really resonate with the content I make. Right, right. It's not, they're like, what is this? This isn't. They don't get it yet. They're yeah. Like, yeah, exactly. This isn't, like, video game. Like, somebody streaming video games or something. <laughs> and so it's just, like, totally different from the content that they watch. Right. Um, so it was really a non-issue after that. Yeah. Um, but I just did decide to leave after that school year. Um, I still have my teaching cert, so maybe one day I'll go back. I've, I've considered, like, substitute teaching just to get into a more, like, normal work environment. Yeah, I yeah. do miss that sometimes where it's, like, <clears throat> going into work, having coworkers, like, being around people, having, like, a set routine. Content creation is just, like, every day Free is different. Free for all. Yeah. 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 Well, that – not only that grade, too, like, that yeah. age group – I feel like is very, very difficult. But I mean that with all due respect because it's oh, not yeah, difficult yeah. from your perspective because, one, you're a teacher. Like, you're in charge of getting these kids to be pre-adults. Like, <laughs> oh, yeah. you, you're raising them, Yeah. you know. So, like, you're a parent of 20 plus, yeah. kind of, yeah. half the day. And, like, teaching in itself, especially nowadays, must be – so much more difficult. Oh, it's challenging. Yeah, I mean, it's a shit I, we joke about it all the time. Yeah, but I can only imagine some of the schools. But like that grade of like seventh, eighth, ninth grade, like your body's going through all that stuff. You know, like girls don't have cooties anymore. <laughs> Guys are still icky. Like all, you know, everything. Just so <laughs> oh, couldn't yeah. even imagine doing that. Yeah. What What did you teach specifically? I taught what, science. So okay. I was certified seven through 12 biology was my oof wow. certification. The mitochondria. No, the yeah. what is it? Yeah, powerhouse of the cell. Right, powerhouse right. of the yeah, cell, yeah. baby. There you That's go. Right. You want to run through the organelles real quick? Absolutely not. <laughs> I didn't that. pass a single class Cut ever. Cut that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll throw yeah, you a pop a, quiz right now. Oh my! Good. I literally will fail miserably. I was such a terrible student, and yeah. I don't test well. But uh, <laughs> no, but that's actually so interesting. So you're like the first individual where I feel like the duality of your two. I don't want to say personalities because they're obviously who you are. But there is a serious difference between being connected to your phone, full-time content creator, 24-7, yeah. and being on the outdoors. People who are completely disconnected <laughs> from the everyday life. Yeah. What What is that transition like? What What kind of emotions do you go through, and how does it feel? And also, what do your friends in like that community think? Because 
I'm not trying to be prejudiced or judgmental here, but I feel like those people are like, dude, put your phone down. Yeah, disconnect. Like we're at the campfire. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was going to do a voice, but I wanted to, and it almost happened. I was like, dude, come on, put your phone down, bro. Yeah. <laughs> no, but like, like, you know, what is that like for you? It's, um, you'd actually be really surprised like how many people out there are connected. Like the TikTok through hiking community is so big right now. Not, I guess there are other things that are much larger, but like for a hiking community, you'd mm. expect there to be so, like far fewer people making content out on the trail. Right. But there are so many people who vlog their hikes. Right. There are people who do YouTube content. There's this guy, um, Craig Adams, who will go out and it's more like ASMR type content, long form on YouTube. And he'll just film drone, um, like set up tripods. He'll film this hike and just bring in all the audio of nature and like make it like a really cool experience for viewers. And he, he does numbers on YouTube. Yeah. That's like people cool. love to like watch that stuff. Buko bucks. I'm sure. Oh yeah. 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 And uh, so there are definitely a lot of creators out there who, who like video their, their, their hikes or get that. I, when I get out there, I like to um, kind of disconnect every once in a while. Like yeah. my routine on a through hike was, in the morning, I wouldn't really touch my phone unless there's like a cool view. I'll take a quick picture or something. But um, the afternoon, if I needed like a little pick me up, I would like listen to music or something. I mm. put like a headphone in. Um, uh, and then at the end of the day, uh, I would kind of like sometimes do a little vlog segment where I like talk to the camera. I would keep a written journal too. So I tried to like balance the disconnecting and filming yeah. um, certain parts. Um, but yeah, there are definitely people out there who are like, dude, put your phone away. Yeah, you? exactly. So yeah. <laughs> that was the that was the big topic in the magazine article you had yeah. um, written up about you too, was how um and you and you actually you surprised me because of how you worded the answers in that. It was very interesting because you admitted the fault of like, oh yeah, these stigmatisms, so whatever you want to call them, stereotypes do exist. But it's okay. Yeah. Like, it's cool. Like, no big deal. Just remember that there's other people out there who yeah. don't understand. So, like, give them a little credit where it's due. Yeah, you for know? sure. Not going to lie, I blacked out during that interview. So, <laughs> <laughs> hey, well, <laughs> you're teaching me what I, I don't remember what I said for my no, son. Because, <laughs> cool. like, you know, you do your skits, which I find, I think your skits are hilarious. Thank for you. one. Thank you. The funniest part about them, I, I love the very beginning because I'm I wait for the name drop. Yeah, yeah, a lot of names. Names. I never know what the name's yeah. going to be. The names are yeah. awesome, and yeah. and I try and correlate. How did he think of that? And I'm just watching the video, but a lot of your stuff it kind of is that alternative, different. It's not the football, the basketball. It's you know hiking. The one of the big ones you did was out in um, Denver, I think. Uh, the resort or not resort, the ski trail. I think. And it was like you lived there, like people who live in a certain area, kind of like I, this is how I would uh, think of like people in Maine and Vermont. Yeah. Like they live out there. They don't really want anyone to come and they talk about why they never left yep. and how they can like do all this different stuff. Yeah. I don't know. I'll look it up when you guys are talking. So I can <laughs> yeah. <get more> information. <laughs> I'm trying to think of the one you're referring yeah. to. Well, it's yeah. pinned on your thing. So I watched it a few times because oh, I was like, was it the Aspen one? Oh, Aspen. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was so funny. That but it was like was the fun. typical yeah. person like from there. Yeah. yeah. Have you, know you know ever I mean? been there? No, I didn't go to Aspen when I was there. Dude. Never been. Oh, oh my God. The wealth <laughs> there is like... Insane, right? Insane. Yeah, you'll go and there's um, Aspen Snowmass. is like this conglomerate of resorts out in that valley. It's all it's technically all one, but there are four different mountains in as a part of this, this cluster. And there's one mountain where there's this like uh, lodge midway up and it's called Cloud Nine. And people will go there. My stomach's making weird noises. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we'll, they'll go up there. And people will just take the lift up, even if they don't ski. They'll go to this lodge. And they're known for selling, like, some of the highest-end champagne at this lodge. And people will buy, like, $800 bottles of champagne, oh my spray goodness. them into the air, take a photo, post it on their Instagram, then go back home. It's, like, it's one of those things. What? Everything out there oh, is yeah. just, like... That's crazy. Image, like yeah. how you appear to other people, like right. status. Right. And That's so crazy. I went there. It's so different from any other ski town. So I'm like, this is so ripe for a video. <laughs> yeah, 100%. It's not even funny. <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah. Now, so. you have a girlfriend too, right? Yeah, yep. What does she think of your content? Does she help you film and stuff? Yeah, she actually, she filmed that Aspen one. So we okay. went out. I have a couple friends who live like up the valley closer to... 
um, like far out from Aspen. We had to drive. It was like a half hour, 40 minutes to the actual mountain. Um, they have this like really cool apartment there. So they invited us out to stay and we made like three days out of it. And we, so we went and uh, filmed the video after a day of skiing and it just like apparently hit home with everyone. Out yeah. There. It was like, it, it went super viral. It was one of my biggest, I think. Mm -hmm. That's so awesome. Yeah. But she, she's been great. Yeah. So she goes on a lot of trips with me and I was going to ask like if she's into making, does she make content too? Or does she so a hiker? It's or funny is enough. It? She, she actually works in digital marketing. Oh, okay, yeah, cool. So, so you have someone to help you with your marketing. Exactly. Aspect. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So she does socials for a lot of brands. She works with an agency. And uh, so she's been really helpful with like, marketing myself online yeah like maybe what things do well on social and what doesn't and so it's been it's kind of a perfect match if that's you will. cool that's yeah. so awesome good for, good you. for you yeah thanks thanks so when it's not the hiking and it's not the content what do you what else do you do like what other hobbies do you have what do you like to get into um climbing <laughs> <laughs> that's badass that's sick um yeah i'm trying to think of some like non-outdoor like snowboarding hiking. no you're just an active person i mean yeah. that, that's an nothing awesome wrong nothing that. wrong with that at I all try to, I but say, like, there's a lot of uh curiosity thoughts because i've watched a lot of those documentaries on netflix and they're scary oh yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. what's Absolutely. the free solo what's free his name? solo alex honnold oh, yeah oh my god yeah crazy i've never watched that what one. an I've alpha seen it, but i've never seen it yeah the what guy an is alpha nuts he's oh, nuts yeah. um but yeah i uh I like to um, ride my bike, Somerville. Nice. It's fitting, right? Road races? You get into one of those? No, no. Iron I'm more Man, of maybe? like a, <laughs> I'm more of like a take my bike out, ride around Somerville, just like usually ride it to my girlfriend's place or go to the Fells. There's some cool trails back there. Oh, cool. That you okay. You can ride on. So if I'm looking to like get creative, I like going out on the bike a little bit. Um, trying to think of like some of my more creative times too. going to bed before going to bed i don't know when do you think of your ideas for videos would you say um 24 7 they never stop really yeah i, I mean he's gonna hate that i say this but i my adhd they're just okay. always going yeah. honestly in the time that we've been sitting here there's been like two or three times where he said something you said something and like an idea starts to go in my head i just it's it never stops do you where do you collect your ideas do you write them down also somewhere? right here Really? Which is why they're it? so sporadic. No, I mean, I have my, I have like my, my notes app, okay. but like if I pulled up my notes app too, like here's the problem. I don't finish the thought in my writing. Yeah. So like, I just look at a note and I like, here's an idea. No one steal this from me. If you see this before I make the video, if Boston had translation. <laughs> and I think what I'm trying to say is, is making my own video about like a translation app. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. One of the things would be, you know, like if, in Japan, they have the translation app. So when you speak into it, like how would it happen in Boston? Oh, it's like talking gotcha. to Boston, like talking. To so I think <laughs> I think that's what I mean. That's a great idea. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's funny. So I I have POV cuddling with someone who fidgets. I don't even know what that means. I mean, it makes sense, but like, that's so that's so like funny. this is all it is. It's just like a stream yeah. of thought. I have the same. Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah. yeah. I I was gonna say I'm not obviously nearly as big as YouTube, but I have the same thing on my phone. So yeah. I'm I'm trying I'm getting there yeah. I'm just trying to put it out there see no. what happens see what sticks it's and you know because I also do content on my dog which was my first mistake because now all I get is dog content I don't see anything else <laughs> so it's like crap now I got to do all these funny things about the dog and I got to get him ready to go and he's a husky yeah. so he's stubborn but I was gonna say the same thing it's all on my phone yep. I have random ideas like that too yeah I can't say them though are you take <laughs> are you getting to a point where your notes app is glitching because you have so much text in there I don't start new notes. I have, I've been making content for like a few years now and I have like two notes on my phone where I've written everything. Yeah. Oh I, I see. I, so I try and delete it so that it's no longer like problematic after uh, I like, problematic. once I make, once yeah. I do the idea, I delete it because then I'll go back and I'll make it again. Think, Cause I'll look at that and be like, have I made this video yet? And I'll go and I'll make it again a totally different way. I'm like, Oh shit. Whoops. Yeah. That's no, mine's, mine's becoming a problem. I like. I'll just type in it and it'll like lag for a little bit because it, oh, okay. like, it doesn't want me to. It's like I'm, it's way what, of telling what me. What series like, phone do you have? That's a fifteen. Oh, okay, yeah, cool. It's like iPhone. 15. I don't know why, just because you're like you're so like environmentally with oh, involved. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I figured you're gonna be like an iPhone. <laughs> like, well, my no. iPhone nine. I'm like, well, listen, no. man, you're about eight you years behind. I feel like normally, like yeah, I have a friend who still has like the physical button on their iPhone where it's yeah. not like the oh yeah, touch. The, so yeah. it's like an iPod. What? Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, I forgot all about. I remember I that when too. that came out. I like panicked. I was like, what the hell am I gonna How do? do? I, I gotta this? use my thumb. That's so dumb. How do we do this. Yeah, I hated it. I hated it. Everyone hated it. That's so funny. Don't change. All right. So then, tell me, what would be 
What's like a, do you have an ultimate like hike that you still want to do? Is it more about the, the trails and less about the mountain? Dude, it's about the journey, you know, Damn. it's not about the destination. So I, you ever heard that? Before? Stand up right now. <laughs> Did you pay him to do stand, this? No, stand up right now. <laughs> Are you serious? Stand up right now. Did put it in the camera. Him? Do it right now. What's he doing? Stand up. Oh, does he You have, have to do it. I have that tattooed on my ribs. Oh, get it out. Get Literally it out. No, do that right now. I'm not pulling off the Are you gun? kidding me? This would be the most That's viral hilarious. clip we've ever had. Why would you say that and force Dude, me to do it against my will? This is fantastic. Will? Oh my God, I got to get naked. Hold on. Let me... <laughs> no, you don't. Just lift up your shirt. You don't have to get that close. It's in The lens is wide. Bam. Success is a journey, Check not a destination. Out. Unbelievable. I can see through his shirt. It's fantastic. Yeah, that's, oh, how yeah, it, that's how good it's tatted. <laughs> that's hilarious. <laughs> that is not funny. Ultimate yeah. cliche. That is so funny. Like, I found that during a deep, deep thought in my uh, financial aid, no, shout out Nichols College bathroom. That's sick. I cannot wait for you to make a video. He's like, you go, <laughs> can I take a My name is Shiloh. Yeah. <laughs> uh, success is not a destination. It's a journey. Well, it's, I was thinking about that on the way in. I was, because I have an idea and I was, I had to ask him first because I want to do an idea of people who aren't from Boston trying to be Boston on TikTok. Okay. So, yeah. but I wanted to make sure he didn't take it offensive wow. before I did it. His first viral video is going to be him making a dig at me. Unbelievable. <laughs> um, but I was thinking, I was like, oh, wouldn't Shame. it be, I find those people funny who make jokes of those classic cliche quotes that you find in the most random places, but it resonates with you for that one minute, but you don't realize how cliche and goofy it is yeah. <laughs> until it's too late. I think so. I've like in my videos, you know that one, like the mountains are calling and I must go. Yeah. Yes. I think I've referenced that in like, five or six different videos at this point <laughs> it's and it's so weird i don't know if you have this but like obviously because there is so much that you can do but there's also so much that you can do mm -hmm. if that makes sense yeah so like at some point you have to start regurgitating some of the oh, things yeah. that you've yeah. said yeah but also you your audience continues to grow every day so a lot of these people don't know it right and yeah. i started refurbishing some of my older mm -hmm. content once in a while someone's like i feel like i've seen this before but most of the time i made these great videos when i had a smaller audience yeah, and now yeah. i'm like well, damn, like I don't have a video today and this was a good one. I got to yeah. like, cause I was, you know, when it was first starting, exactly, you right. were far more invested. So the scripts were way better cause I had more time. <laughs> I cared more like, yeah. so yeah, I don't know. But, yeah. um, do you, do you ever get a comment about like you should, like an idea? They're like, you should make a video about this. I've gotten those comments having made that video like the day prior. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, if you scroll back like a, just a little bit just on my speech. feed, it's, it's right there. Yeah. It's right there. <laughs> it, is, it is literally what I deal with on a regular. So, yeah. like, obviously, I started TikTok in 2019. Yeah. So, when I did it, all of my friends were, that's a kid's app. It's a dancing app. You shouldn't be on there. That's just Vine. It's stupid. Blah, blah, blah. And now it's like, Only you know, it would be true. really funny if you did this, dude. I'm like, yeah. oh, yeah, make your own TikTok, pal. Okay? <laughs> that and then, like, you know, people will send me stuff now because they anticipate me having one of my reactions. So we just had, um, you know, like a Rhode Island staple, Alan Sean Feinstein. You ever heard of the Feinstein Junior Scholars? Is that the same Feinstein that, like, Roger Williams has a yes. building named mm -hmm. after? Yes, yes. Yep. So Alan Sean Feinstein had this wonderful, like, school foundation. He was a huge staple in our community. He just passed away. I had to have gotten probably 60 DMs. Where's your reaction to this? What are you doing? I'm like... I'm sorry, like, I know he passed away, but now's not the time for me to, like, use this man's yeah. death to go viral. Yeah, like, exactly. I have di I have some morals here. Yeah, you got some decorum. <laughs> <laughs> or, like, you know, I had made some comments about the Washington Bridge here in Rhode Island. Yep. I made a few videos. Now, anytime there's an update, people are like, where's your reaction? I'm like, this is boring. I'm not going to make a video about this yet. Like, it's just yeah, that yeah. they found paperwork that someone did something fraudulent. Shocker, it's Rhode Island. Yeah. Like, that happened. So People need to know. They need to hear it from the source. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they need but yeah, you that, out there. It happens pretty pretty frequently yep. so then i have i guess the reason why i asked you that other question was because are you like is everest on your radar or like uh, k2 no. or anything out in the there was a time where my like one of my goals was to hike like kilimanjaro i was gonna say yeah. kilimanjaro is one too which yeah. is like at the end of the day it's it's really impressive I, I found out that it's more of like a hike rather than like mountaineering yeah so it's it's like a walk up obviously the elevation is really intense uh but that was like one of my biggest goals I've since kind of strayed from that a little bit. Okay. But um, Everest, not so much. I've read a lot of books about mountaineering and Everest in particular, and it just doesn't seem appealing to me. <laughs> I feel yeah. like the the permitting process and, like, expedition price alone are, right. like, two of the most insane things I've ever heard. Right. Um, plus, it's, like, it seems 
a little too out of my comfort zone, I would say. I'd Crazy rather do dangerous. more like backpacking. And right. Like, mm. Once you get like cold weather involved, it's not really my thing. Like winter camping is just not a thing I do. That right. sounds terrible. I like, I'll snowboard in the winter. I'll go out for the day, but like no shot will you find me camping overnight in the winter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that like, sounds miserable. Yeah. Really I, I had a friend who was actually my roommate after the AT. I hiked with him for like half of the trail. And he rehiked the Appalachian Trail southbound, starting at Katahdin in Maine on December 5th. So he hiked through New England in f- December and January and into February. What a beast. He he was on Franconia Ridge in the Whites, and it was like negative 30 degree wind chill. He had Ooh. to get off like to stay in a hostel for the night. Right. But he spent like most nights out in the snow, like in the bitter cold. What an animal. Like we're... Different breeds. That is a man yeah. with mental yeah. fortitude. That is Seriously. incredible. Yeah. Fortress so, of that. I always tell people about that guy. I'm like, <laughs> legend. <laughs> <laughs> so what's some of your favorite content to make? Because it is different, even though the punchline is very similar. Mm-hmm. So what do you what do you really like to do the most? I really like making like ski content. So I'm looking forward to the winter, like ski and snowboard stuff. Mm. Uh, I have a lot of ideas that I've written down that I can't really do in the summer. They're all like ski related, so I'm yeah. I'm psyched to start pumping those out a little oh, that's bit. That's awesome. And what do they yeah. say? Like the farmer's calendar is calling for a pretty rough winter. They apparently. say that every year. Yeah, I mean, they say that every year. I don't know. I, I, <laughs> I'm not like a weather manipulation kind of guy, but I'm like, okay, it's getting a little that. weird. Like, that what it's been farmer like, are they asking? Yeah, like, the same farmer that still thinks that we need to have like daylight savings. Where I'm like, yeah, this is so backwards. Yeah. yeah. Why are we like? I'm shocked. It should go the opposite direction so that we have more light at night. You know. But anyways. Yeah, I digress. Yeah. Don't get us on our soapbox. <laughs> so I then what hope. would be your next, what is your next hike? Do you have one mapped out that you're thinking about for the, in the next year or two? I got no plans for like a long, long one. It would probably be something like the long trail. The okay. AT and the long trail go together for like a hundred miles and then it veers off into New Hampshire. Long trail continues north. So there's like a section of the long trail I haven't done and that's on my list. And I want to do that maybe in the fall. Okay. Something like that when the foliage is, like pumping, so That's very so cool. cool. I can yeah. only imagine what it looks like. That time I, know. I know. So then you're. Let's see. So, born and raised in Connecticut. Well, yep. born in Philly, raised in Connecticut. You live in Mass. You teach in New Hampshire, and you've hiked everything. You're wearing a Vermont shirt. So I think of all Where of our guests. Where does your allegiance lie? <laughs> yes, now? I was gonna say. And you went to school in Rhode Island. <laughs> yeah. Right? Of all of our guests, you're probably the most seasoned when it comes to the next question. Oh, that's. Really I sad. need you to rank. Your New England states in order. This I genuinely believe is going to be the best answer yeah. of all we've had because this individual, ladies and gentlemen, has actual experience in each state. Now, am I ranking it based on a certain category or just overall? Overall, overall. bet like states. I did a I did a video a long time ago ranking the hiking in each of the New England states, and I forget the order I put them in, but I think I can. I'm thinking overall New England states. Um, number one, I'd probably say Vermont. Okay. Really like Vermont. That's what I mean. If you're if you've done the Vermont thing and you get it, yeah, it usually ends up number one. Yeah, but most people don't. You know, I've shifted in the past from coastal New England to more like mountainous. I, I spend more of my time like on a weekend traveling north rather than south. Um, so right now I'd say Vermont. Have you ever spent time in like a small town in Vermont? Never. Like, I the only place that I ever went was um. Oh gosh, it's not the Flume George because that's, that's New, New Hampshire. Hampshire yeah, but is it, it was Queechee Gorge. Yes, thank you. Yeah, that's the I only place in New Vermont right. that I've ever actually been. It's a really cool spot. Yeah, there's um, but it's like barely over the border. If you go so. a little deeper into Vermont, yeah. you'll you'll come across some sick <laughs> some sick towns, and like you feel like you're in the middle of nowhere, but it's like so quaint and so quiet, and like there are no chains really in like the heart of Vermont. I feel like you go to certain spots, you can find them, but like. You drive through the like the roads of Vermont. It's just like unparalleled in my opinion. Okay. Um, so I'd put Vermont one. Um, I feel like I'm leaning more towards the hiking. Like I'm trying to like, whatever. Hey, however right. you want to categorize it, that's like you know. Yeah. However, yeah, even with the hiking, you still have more say because a lot of people say the same thing. Like I've never really been to Vermont, Maine, New Hampshire, so I'll yeah. put those like four, five, and six. Blah blah blah. Because I'm the same way. I haven't been up there enough to have an actual opinion. Yeah. Yeah, I'd say um, in terms of second place, I'd probably say New Hampshire. Okay, really that like was New my Hampshire. number one. So okay, okay. really Vermont, like New Hampshire. Hampshire. I've spent most of my like hiking time in New Hampshire. I've done like most of the four thousand footers there. 
um, worked there so many summers. So I feel like most, a lot of my heart's in New Hampshire. Um, next, I'd have to say Rhode Island. Wow. Rhode Island. Top three. Okay. But I'm going to be honest with you here. I haven't really other than coming to Providence for like a concert in this podcast, I haven't come back to Rhode Island in a long, long time. Yeah. We're going to cut that. No. <laughs> <laughs> but I feel like a lot of my like past existed here. Yeah. So in college, like had such a fun time. Newport is one of my favorite places. Um, the beaches in Rhode Island are really cool. Um, Sounds to me like you're avoiding an ex-girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, I don't really come here because Beth is still around. No, so. no. <laughs> It was, um, I think it's just because when I go home to Connecticut, I take the mass pike to 395. Right. Avoid, not. Avoid us. I get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I got you. No, I'm giving you third place. <laughs> no, third place is great. So if um, we're in third place then, what is, have you had three all the way? Oniville? Are we talking roast beef? No, we're talking. Wieners, baby. Oh, you're talking. You're, you're talking about. You're taking Miller's. You're th- <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I had three ways at Roger. No, um, three all the way is like Oniville hot wieners. We you, ask everyone this. You're speaking yeah. a different language. I don't know what Most that is. That's a Providence thing. Okay, so, yeah. all right. So you didn't yeah. really get, you know, the... No, well, Roger so. Williams is he out got there the, far enough where if, like... He if got he the was, East Bay, Rhode Island experience. I guess we were on an island over in Rhode You are, the East know? Bay. Oh, yeah. It's like a different... It's a different yeah. type of living on different that side breed of out there. Rhode Island. Like the 95 corridor through... I feel like I didn't really frequent that a lot. Yeah. That's fair. Um, but I spent a lot of time, like, going out to bars in Providence, Bristol area, and then Newport, I'd Okay. Um Based on those, I'll put it third place. Gotcha. Um, cool. Fourth, it's between Maine, Mass, and Connecticut, huh? I'm going to go Massachusetts. Wow. I thought for sure you were going to say Maine. Yeah. I'm surprised. Maine Ooh. is, I do I do really love Maine in terms of hiking, so I'm going to put that fifth, and then Connecticut last. <laughs> <laughs> Connecticut last. We have another. So, so there you sorry, have it, folks. Hometown. It's not me. Okay, we have a Connecticut born, raised, I keep saying born, a Connecticut raised individual who I, put it last. I feel like I like don't need to like pledge allegiance to Connecticut, you yeah. know? Like I grew up there. <laughs> it it provided for me when it needed to, but I'm like having gone to all the other like New England states, I'm like they have they have so much more to offer in my right. opinion. So um, why Maine fifth? So why mass over Maine? I'm I feel curious. like Maine I just don't like you really have to go out of your way to get up there. I, it's yeah. beautiful. I've spent a lot of time in Maine hiking. Yeah. Coast is incredible. Like, don't get me wrong. Um, love it. Like, I would go up there. I just feel like like Acadia is the closest like national Acadia's park. Like, it's insane. It's the closest national park to me. I've never been. Oh, wow. Okay. Never been. Neither have I. Yeah. I'm saying it like, oh, wow, wow. Yeah. <laughs> I've been, but I haven't. <laughs> but I just like, you know, I'm familiar with it. You I've know. only gone to these two specifically. Oh, uh, right, right, right. <laughs> 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 um, so I feel like I, I have a lot more to explore in Maine, and so I'm going to leave it towards the bottom of the list just for now. That okay. could change. The list is fluid, right? Right, yeah. of course. This could yes. change over time. 100%. Um, when we as have you stands, back on, we can redo the list. Perfect. As it stands, <laughs> yeah, Maine, 5th, Connecticut, 6th. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay, so. then. So then our next question would be ranking your New England sports. Okay. Since that's how... A lot of us identify around here is Very with our true. sports. So how yeah. would you rank them? And it could be your favorites. Okay. It could be how you perform. Like you Does might it just have perf- to be a professional sport. No, be whatever you want. I mean, if, as long as they're a New England team. UConn basketball number one. There you that's, go. That's my biggest. There you go. Hey, might be basketball a basketball country, man. It is basketball. UConn country. is basketball HQ. Huskies yeah. don't mess around, man. A lot of good, a lot of good, a lot of good teams. A lot yeah. of good players come yeah. out of there. Men and women, you really can't. <laughs> I have, ben um, Gordon. Mar Okafor, remember those guys? America, those are, yeah. Um, yeah, whoops. whoops. <laughs> what I say, Omar, whoops. Anyways, no, but it's, yeah. Um, I might sound like a bandwagon, but I started intensely watching UConn 2014 in my freshman dorm at the start, the start of the of March Madness. So the start of the tournament, they won it that year. Yep. I watched it on like a 18-inch TV. I felt like Michael Scott in his apartment <laughs> with my freshman Nick roommate. Flat with my... <laughs> With my freshman roommate, we watched every game, and they went on and won the championship that year. So I was hooked. I was hooked. My brother's been a big fan for like a little bit longer than I have. Um, he's got season tickets, and so I've watched ever since 2014, like really intently. We used to watch like every once in a while because my mom went to UConn. Oh, okay. So cool. she kind of got us into it when we were younger, but I wasn't really like into it. Um, started watching in college, and then I was able to go to the Final Four 
the past two years and like see them win the championship both of those that's years. So awesome. And yeah. so I'm like, you can't beat it. I'm like, that's unreal. In I terms of college imagine. basketball. Yeah. yeah. We went to Houston then Phoenix last year or this year, I would say. And, uh, so I'm psyched for the season to start. That's, that's my number cool. one. Um, next up, I would probably say the Celtics. All right. Like the Celtics. Um, Bruins next. Uh, Shout out to bees. Yeah. And Go then <laughs> Get all their stuff on. it's a very nice hat. There you go. And uh, Pats, I'd say after that. And then we're doing revolution. Yeah. Yep. I always include the revs. Yeah. Revs and recently I've been trying to get a little more, a little more clout, a little more uh, emphasis little on the new, uh, new England free jacks. Oh yeah. Rugby team. No they way. won the championship this year. Where do they play? Um, great question. <laughs> great question. I don't even know. Want to Google that for us? <laughs> That I've been following them for a little bit. They um they have sent they me a message before, the... like, hey, we'd love to have you out for a game. And I was like, Yeah, sure. But like honestly, I didn't follow up, which is my own horrible due diligence. But yeah, um, yeah, they just won the championship this year. I think they play probably at like a college, Isn't I would the imagine. Old Paul Sox? No. No, the old no the or the new stadium. Do they build a new one? No. Rhode Island FC is building their own stadium. Oh, that's what I'm thinking yeah, of. Rhode Island it. Football Club. Okay. Maybe they play at Brown, something like that. Brown. Yeah. No, they play at Mass. No, I'm Massachusetts Veterans Memorial Stadium. Okay, cool. Oh. Where's that? All right. Guess we'll find out. Mass Vets <laughs> We're putting Stadium. We're to work right now. Yeah. All these <laughs> we got to. Um, I was going to say. Quincy. It's in Quincy. Oh, all right. Well, I hear from Somerville. You're not going to go to Quincy. What's, is Quincy south? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's south from where you're at. Okay. But it, I mean, <laughs> yes, it is south in general <laughs> from Boston. But, I love you know. maps, but like you name a, a town in Massachusetts, I'm like I have no clue. There are so many towns in Massachusetts, yeah. though. I just in the eastern corridor alone is yeah. absurd. Yeah. Oh yeah, and then Rhode Island, we got you know 47, 48 towns. Not too many. We got like forty seven people. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It makes no sense. Um, it makes, actually, we have more people in Rhode Island than Vermont does, population wise. Yeah. Vermont yeah, has the I least. That po- makes sense, I think right? Vermont also has one of the lowest populations in all of the. All US. they have is Burlington, Montpelier. Montpelier is like small, right? There's not much up there. Yeah, they Rob do a good job at staying and keeping themselves a secret. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's how they Same. like it. Um, back to sports. Uh, yes, I don't know. I don't really know rugby that well. Like, yeah, me neither. I'm me, just they're 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 you, a pro New England team, and I'm just like trying to give them a little bit of clout. Yeah, yeah. You put me in the stands, like. I might as well be blindfolded. I don't know what's going on. That's how I feel at their soccer games for like the Rebs, but yeah, I'm there to cheer them on. So yeah, anything absolutely. from about I'm willing it. to learn. Yeah. <laughs> Put the ball in the net. That's what you want to watch for. In rugby? Oh no, that's completely different. <laughs> you actually got to take the ball and you touch it. Is that if it? If you just go past the, um, this is not how you're supposed to say it, but the goal line mm. where the end zone is, you yeah. got to touch it on the ground, and it's a try. Try. I've heard that. Yeah. I have a buddy who If you don't in touch it on the ground, does not count. Someone can scoop it up and run it back. Absolutely no clue. And, Absolutely uh, no clue. And think of controlled violence. That's what rugby is. Yeah, they're always in a pile for some reason. <sighs> yeah. Honestly, I just really like when the people who are like Samoan descent and they do the their, haka. The hakas. Have you seen oh the quads God. on these guys? Yeah. yeah. The my size whole, of the freight, trains. On. freight trains. Yeah. It's unbelievable. I would never get in front of that. No. Matt, this has been absolutely fantastic, dude. We <laughs> love having you on. Let people know where they can follow you. I mean, obviously, I've asked you if you had any other pl- projects, but let people know where they can follow you and, and tag along on your journey, and we can all get ready to throw our backpacks on and join you on your next hike. For sure. I was hoping we could chat for another couple hours. Yeah. <laughs> Are you cool with that? <laughs> no. Um, at Matt's Lion. It's all that was available. I would have put Matt Lyons, but Instagram, I guess somebody took that. So it's M-A-T-T-S-L-Y-O-N. And that's on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube. Um, and then I've got a website, mattlyonscomedy.com. And then uh, we do have a website for our documentary, but I think somebody hacked it. So you, <laughs> <laughs> we, I think our URL license expired and okay. somebody like snatched it. And so it goes to some like, gambling website <laughs> classic um, so i would give you that url but that's in the works so um i'll pass on that yeah one. follow him on uh, <laughs> his social media platforms and he'll keep you updated yeah, yeah uh, when yeah. the documentary is going to be coming out and you said that i'll be likely be within the new year yeah awesome. early next year i'd say well brother thank you very much for coming down thank you thank episode you 15 in the books man Whew, unbelievable flying. can't believe we did it <laughs> All right, folks, that is going to conclude episode 15 of the So New England podcast. We had a great time with our guest today. And as always, folks, remember, life's life's better better in New England. England.